What's up, anime fans? This is Rafael from C Manga, and I'm joined by Jonathan. What's up, guys? And we're here to give you another review of Death Parade. This week's episode seven: Alcohol Poisoning. Or yeah. poison, sorry. Yeah, alcohol, <laughs> alcohol poison. <laughs> uh, which could be related to, uh, yeah, what part of the alcohol is poison in this episode? I thought it was like a, some sort of metaphor for, because. Um, this episode sort of explains the way Deckim got given his bar mm. and um, the person who's now in charge of all the information handed it over handed it over to him and said oh you like alcohol you can have all of this mm. <laughs> and you're like I'm so glad I left it yeah so, yeah I, I, I think it's probably related to that but um, I don't know if you have any sort of if you know if you know better than I do actually mm. you probably put it in the comments below and I have a look at it and be like yeah man that's 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 right you're right yeah but this <laughs> this episode itself was actually interesting because it's you know expanding you know um I'd say explanations of what arbiters are yeah um kind of dwelling into the universe a bit more because you know we're understanding that they're actually in a tower and no yeah. no no actually is like um in charge of the people in that entire tower so it shows that there's obviously other ones as well yeah um and also the arbiters themselves now seem um a bit more should i say dull like or dummy like than yeah. we originally thought i thought they were you know just previously humans who you know were chosen to become arbiters but they in fact they were really just dummies created and at the beginning, we even see Oculus explain that, you know, you might as well say the three rules um, that arbiters have to kind of follow. And obviously, they can't quit making judgments. They can't experience death because they've never experienced it before. And it would make it them oh, too, yeah. Yeah, too close to humans. And then the final one is they can't feel emotions because they're dummies. So it's literally they're just, you might as well say, robots there to make judgments. And they can't feel or think anything else. Yeah, um, kind of. Yeah, what they're pro- originally programmed. Yeah, in terms right? of they're kind what of like, programmed. Yeah, yeah, kind of like um, <laughs> I don't want to say sentinels, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. All right, in um, a way, it is kind of the title. Yeah, but they do have like standard emotions, like mm. happiness, sadness. Um, I'm not sure about jealousy though. Mm. But um, well, you yeah. know, it's that none of those actually conflict with their judgment. Their judgment yeah, yeah, is yeah. always absolute until yeah. obviously um this episode explained that um what was it is it nona and the previous um arbiter for quinn deckham quinn yeah they explained that deckham is actually somewhat of a arbiter of um, human emotions in yeah. some river and it kind of makes sense up to this point now what known is trying to test she did say before that um having different judgments like different opinions on judgments is good so she seems to be testing out um Deckham's um, way of judgment yeah and... I think she kind of like sort of is injecting them with some sort of not yeah. injecting them but she's like planting I think it's more compassion isn't it mm. um for passion you know, and sympathy yeah so you know that will sort of alter the way the perspective on judgment it's not mm. as clear as black and white which is um which is what all the other arbiters are, are kind of based on. It's like you're either good or you're bad. Mm. <laughs> you're but bad or you're good. Yeah, there's no yeah. like sort of you know middle ground or grey area. Whereas we've seen with Deckham's judgments, he's kind of you know seen um, extra scenarios to add on where this person yeah. wasn't particularly bad. They just did something you know desperate in their life, and he's even said he has. Um, I say sympathy for those who've lived yeah. good lives. He acknowledges oh. like. Yeah, their accomplishments and whatnot, mm. um, which is why, um, which explains the episode where um, that game one, where he hugged them when they both died, yeah, and it was just sort of basically, you know, um, if it was somebody like Ginty, <laughs> he probably would have just no said, sympathy, <laughs> <laughs> no sympathy whatsoever. But funny enough, talking about Ginty, this episode, that grey area seems to come into play now because it's not as black and white because he's um, he can't actually make judgment on that girl who's a super fan mm. <laughs> yeah so Mayu's still there yeah. irritating him yeah. and what's funny enough is it kind of, it's like you know they both kind of contradict themselves he can't understand her she seems to understand humans but when he says oh 
um, so this is how humans are and she's like what do you mean and he's like how can you say that but not understand yourself so you know there's so many like yeah. wires being twisted so neither of yeah. them can actually come to a conclusion and that's yeah. like messing up Ginty's judgement yeah and it's it ridiculous. sort of highlights the difference um, between um, their relationship sort of highlights the difference between the Arbiters and mm. like, normal souls um, it just gives you more than Deckim's and the black haired woman's one because mm. you know you can see the differences between them it's like alright he's very cold but mm. Ginty is not actually cold in terms of he does show emotion <laughs> he's just a bit more ragged yeah. and raw like he yeah. generally doesn't care as much yeah. as um, personality, yeah man. he's got Sorry, more Deckham. of a <laughs> <laughs> no it's true Deckham is pretty much a you might as well say a doll that's slowly yeah. gaining um, you know personality and um, emotions yeah, we even saw um, a funny part with you know when the black hair girl was cooking oh, yeah. and he was like aren't you gonna compliment he's like oh I apologize this is very nice he's like show some emotion he's like this is extremely nice and yeah. she's just <laughs> she's like, what? and the crazy thing is like visibly he was smiling so mm. he was sort of smirking and he was enjoying the food yeah you can and tell just, yeah and then he's like oh sorry this mm. is <laughs> you're just there like what <laughs> so yeah but, but talking about the black hair girl we actually um do even bring her up she um comes across you know the book the Chavo story and yeah. it caused her to regain memories that led right. her to understand she's actually dead yeah. so um <laughs> so she has lived mm. <laughs> and so that's lived. like you know kind of being you know put out there she's dead it's like that's it yep and then we also find out that quinn um quinn was the person who owned dekim's bar mm. well who owned yeah was it Quinn Dickin? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah. yeah, Quinn, <laughs> yeah. Quinn, Quinn was the Quinn Dickin yeah. um, arbiter. Yeah, and and they're both their names make up the name of Quinn the actual. But yeah, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and then we also get a bit more insight into the power structure. So Nona can actually assign people different roles, mm. such as Castor and Quinn. Um, Oculus is is obviously as we sort of know from before is above Nona like he's like the overseer of the whole enterprise this is making Nona the sort of the manager <laughs> Clavis uh, he's, a, he's just a doorman <laughs> yeah Clavis man. I don't know he just smiles too much for my liking every time I see him smile it reminds me of um, that guy from Bleach <laughs> what, one of the oh yeah Gin Gin yeah. you know what I mean and he was and his mm. back was ridiculous mm. so yeah man <laughs> this this episode um like what you was talking about the structure it was interesting you know quinn she was happy to leave you know yeah, but when she... she actually went to the information bureau the job is depressing it's just literally factory work it's and the death um, toll is actually increasing so you know more and more memories are coming in for them to compile and she, has to, she has to sort of process all of them mm. uh yeah and, it's actually... and and the uh, actual figures now for deaths is ridiculous. It was like seven da- what was it? Seven thousand deaths per day, yeah. like one hundred and sixteen per minute, two per second. And they've got they've got to process this for the arbiters to use. Like, and us. I think it's I think that's just Japan, right? Because I think so. Yeah, I think, I think now in terms of real world, because I think they quoted the real world as well. Mm. I think now I think it's roughly like. 100 and something or 200 and something thousand people die every day i could imagine so, something like that yeah yeah globally there's like mm. how, how many billion of us now like seven eight something like that yeah something close to that so um yeah <laughs> so she has to go through just like that region mm. yeah she has to process all of those memories um and sort of fragment them in a way where you don't get everything but you, you get have enough, enough. To make yeah judgment yeah, yeah it's a tough job isn't it yeah, I mean, I think Castro has it a bit heavy, but you can see she's got some sort of technology to sort mm. it out. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? She's got, like, touchscreen. She's got, the, she's got like, Oculus Rift there mm. and all sorts of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. But um, people in the information bureau, they're literally just factory workers and they've got to deal with these, you know, the kind of crystal um, diamonds. Yeah, <laughs> she's, got the, she's got the lens on her eye as well. So, yeah, man. But, you know, I think uh, this episode gave us a lot of insight into the backstory, man. Mm. Um. Yeah, and the black-haired woman was actually drawn to the Chava book, mm. you know? and I know they played it off like, oh, all the other ones are about 
alcohol but let's mm. be honest man you know <laughs> let's be honest um she was probably drawn to it for some sort of reason yeah uh, other than her dream being exactly the same as the book and being and regaining her memories and everything it's, yeah. it's clear this is all being set up like, yeah. for future episodes yeah and um there are there's two books aren't there mm. yep there's one two that... there's one that nona has and then there's one that she has and that and that you could tell that was most likely left for her to recover so yeah and um oculus and know something now mm. and known as like god damn it yeah she's like i'm literally out of time he's yeah. gonna he's she he's going to eventually know what little you know experiment she's doing and uh, boy i want to know what's gonna happen when that finds um you know kicks off because that guy that is mind. yeah that's taboo and the way he's so cheerful but the look in his eyes just yeah. frightening like even known as like oh no <laughs> what you doing here mm. you know what i mean and then you know once these sort of guys you know <laughs> if uh, if watching animes have shown me anything when these sort of calm types tend to mm. use their, <laughs> blow their lid it, it. it's pretty uh, apocalyptic so mm. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Mm. Um, but yes. that's more or less it. I mean, it was it was very very well compiled episode. As I said, it's explaining that there's an experiment going on um, with Nona and obviously Deckham, the Arbiters, um, their whole makeup, the structure of the actual um, judgment system, everything. All of that is like you know fleshing out the world, so we're understanding it a bit more. And then obviously we still need to know what the black haired girls. Um, name is yeah. <laughs> and more of her story all we know so far is she's dead yeah mm, so <laughs> that, <laughs> <And that's> but, <laughs> yeah but that's yeah. it um definitely looking forward to episode eight what was it called death rally yeah yeah and i forgot to mention there's two special guests to be sent to deckham so this seems like this is going to be something interesting different from before so uh, those are the ones that know no mm. to sort of send exactly in. That's like, I can't do that. She's like, come on, please. Mm. And then boom. So she did it. So <laughs> that's it, man. But yeah, that's all for next week. And we definitely looking forward to seeing what's going to happen now because things are starting to become a bit more, you know, serious. No yeah, more funny yeah. games. But you guys know the usual. If you enjoyed um, this episode, let us know what you think and we'll join you next week. Take care. Take care. Ciao.